Hello, we are back with my two favorite individuals, Dustin McComas and Drew Bishop of Five Tool, and we're here to to talk about the 2023 signing class. A uh, little belated, but you know, holidays and all the fun stuff going on this time of year. So, Dustin, Drew, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah, it's a rare kind of slow time for baseball. Kind of, <laughs> sort of. Doesn't really yeah. feel like it, but. Um, yeah, there's no games for us to be out to, no games for you to be to, and uh, yeah, it's a little transition period for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's the quiet time, right? We're just waiting around for the fall reports to come out, but uh, yeah, fall ball's done. They're, the boys are hanging out and having fun, so um, yeah, it's, I guess we're counting down. We're, what, under 60 days now to, to the start of the next season, so looking forward yeah. to another trip to Arlington. Hopefully, it's not an ice fest this time around. Yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> That was that was one of the most wild experiences I've ever been through. Like I still to this day, I didn't think we were going to be leaving the day that we left. <laughs> and then we we lost our hotel like the night before. And luckily, the people with the Rangers are were so great and got us in touch with like three or four hotels within like 30 minutes or else that play that whole. I mean, on the field, it was a disaster. It didn't go so well, but it was I mean, we hadn't. I think it had been like seven or eight days since we had touched a ball, but just, I mean, the fact that we even showed up in Arlington was quite a feat. So hopefully they don't have to go through that this year. Yeah. I remember seeing pictures of the guys playing long toss on the, on the 40 yep. acres in front of the oh, yeah. tower of the snow. That was, that was something yep. else. So. Yeah. 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 And yeah, apparently, I mean, the, the season apparently ended after those three games, you know, based on the reaction. <laughs> so I, I'm still amazed that Texas had the season that it did because it was over after, after, you know, facing yeah. a bunch of future first round picks and, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I'm just, I'm just still flabbergasted. They kept records and everything. It's impressive. <laughs> People showed up at games. It was very shocking. That yeah. Day. It was wild. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, like I said, we're here to talk about the, the 2023 signing class. It, they Everyone put pen to paper. Um, for the most part, I think there's one outstanding still. But, uh, you know, I think there's a couple of kids that we could we can discuss that are a lot of fun to watch, but obviously have no chance of making it on campus. And then, you know, kind of take a glance at what else y'all y'all have seen from this class and kind of expectations coming in. So um, do you want to start by a position or do you want to start with just the top of the class of a really fun talent from Round Rock that'll never make it. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, how yeah. about it? You've seen him the most. Yeah, you know, Travis Sikora is, is super unique. And it's, you know, you see a guy with his size and length, and, and typically they're just kind of arm strength guys that aren't great athletes. But Travis is actually a good athlete. So that adds to the equation. And then you get to the the velocity. I mean, I've, I've seen him up to a hundred. Um, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, if, um, he hits one Oh one this year, we saw him at a hundred again at area code and it's, um, it's a relatively easy 100, you know, like, yeah, he puts some effort into it. He's, he's a classic rock and fire kind of guy, the way you watch him, just, you know, that length gets moving and he gets going in that tempo and he just lets it rip. But, I think, you know, when Drew and I saw him at area code, I think we were both really impressed with the, he actually pitched, you know, he wasn't just a guy that tried to blow heaters by everybody. He, yeah. he changed the shape of his breaking ball. Some, um, you know, he had, he had the splitter working, um, you know, the fastball, he was trying to move it to both sides of the plate. He wasn't, yeah, he went out there searching for a hundred a little bit in that first inning and, and tried to pitch. So um, when you start checking the boxes of, of the future stuff and, and the velocity and yeah, it's, it, he's, uh, he's unlikely to make it to campus uh, <laughs> from, from that standpoint. I, I think most, um, you know, he, he's not a, if you believe the, um, the draft, early draft stuff right now, at least the public stuff, he's not a first round lock, um, but I think that that could change if he comes out in the spring and he throws more innings, you know, he's, they've been pretty smart about his workload. Yeah. Um, he's always been able to, to like, he's, he's been very conscious of building up and taking care of himself and being in his routine and stuff like that. So if he comes out in the spring and, you know, he's throwing five innings consistently or things like that, I think he's going to move up some lists from there. So, but regardless the, I don't know many guys with his, profile that end up making it to campus but you have to take a chance on these guys always 
always uh, because yeah. there always is a greater than one than zero percent chance that they <laughs> do end up on campus yeah, yeah I think he's, he's been smart about his workload for sure there's been a couple of times where i have seen him in person i've got a good family friend that played you know the last three or four years travel and you know against round rock um you know he signed for baylor and you know he's given me some firsthand experience going up against him and yeah he's he's a special talent i think the thing that always surprised me was you know you said he has a relatively easy motion but he's a bigger frame kid but he's able to keep everything pretty compact and together which was always it's a lot of fun to see so yeah one of the things about i think he's one of those guys i think is gonna have gonna be somewhat penalized by just being over scouted um you know everyone's known about him he's been on the big stage every you know everyone's going to nitpick on him because they've seen him so much. Um, you know, there's going to be, he's going to be one of those guys that there's probably double digit people every time out that he throws. And, and that's tough. Like that's tough for a college pitcher. Um, and it's extremely tough for a high school guy too, because, you know, it's, it, it's a tough feeling to go out there thinking, man, like if I give up a run or two while I'm throwing a hundred in high school, you know, that may drop me, 10 spots or 2 million bucks, you know? And so it's, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how, how he handles that. I mean, just like any kid, um, you know, when I was at Texas, that's, we, we saw that a lot and some guys are really good at, and it pushes them and some guys, it makes them go the opposite direction and they press. So I, I think that'll be something interesting to watch, but, you know, I mean, he's a guy that if he popped up in, you know, March and blew up this year and nobody knew about him, and he's hitting a hundred in the spring, he might get drafted higher just because of that late helium that, that a lot of guys see and, and, and you don't get over, you know, over analyzed really by so many of these guys um, because they'll, they'll watch and If he goes out there and he's throwing a hundred early and then he has one outing where it's down, it's like, what's wrong with him? Um, and I think that's, that's something that he'll have to fight against, but, you know, like Dustin mentioned, he can pitch, you know, he's yeah. not just a thrower. So that's yeah. that he'll have that going for him. Um, you know, and if he stays healthy, it, you know, it's probably a long shot that he sh shows up, but, but like Dustin said, you got to take a chance on him. I mean, if you don't, yeah. he ends up elsewhere in the big 12 or SEC and you're facing him for <laughs> yeah. three years. That's, that's not a problem you want to be dealing with. Um, but yeah, yeah. you know, he, he, he's a real cerebral kid. Um, seems to have a plan for everything he does, which yeah. is good. Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, just an impressive kid every time we've talked to him and seen him. Yeah. He's been, he's been impressive. And like I said, I, I know family friends that have played against him for a while. And um, overall, I think it's, you're right. He's very cerebral. You know, he takes everything very, very methodically um, from what I've seen, especially his, his warm ups and the way he takes care of his arm. So um I guess sticking with pitchers, you know, one of the, the kids that I've really enjoyed watching is, uh, and he's kind of blown up a little bit to some degree, but Hudson Hamilton, mm -hmm. um, real hard thrower, but just kind of a, the mentality I see on the mound is something I think really translates well to the, to the college game. What have you all seen? Yeah, he, he, to me, is in that sweet spot of guys that are really, really good high school players and good prospects, but probably not good enough to be guys that are they end up being pro guys out of high school. And I, I think that you mentioned the makeup. Uh, he's got a great, great makeup re reputation. Um, I saw him this fall down at U of H when he was with the, the Dodgers scout team. And um, he's another guy that can pitch and he's, you know, he's, he's not going to blow you away with the radar gun readings, but I think he's going to sit comfortably in the low nineties. He's probably as he adds strength and mature, he's probably going to, you know, be able to bump it up there a little bit harder uh, but he's a natural spinner of the baseball, um, you know, with his breaking stuff. Um, it's it's at least a three pitch mix that I think he's going to be able to throw for strikes pretty consistently. But the makeup, I mean, it's it's fiery, but it's under control fiery, yeah. you know, like it's very much a I'm going to come after you. I want to compete. I want to get after you. I want to set the tone kind of guy. Uh, no fear at all when he's on the mound. And I think he's got future leadership intangibles. You know, the kind of guy that you want your younger pitchers when he's older at Texas to kind of follow the lead of of him setting the example and things like that. But a great get. Um, you know, we've got him at uh where is he at on the list? He's 28, he's 28 our, for us. 28 on our list. Um, and uh I could even see him maybe ticking up a little bit. Um that Grand Oak teams is gonna be really, really good this year. But um yeah, yeah he he's a guy that I think Texas fans when he gets to campus and just 
see how he goes about his business on the mound um will will appreciate the way he goes about it yeah yeah as the same yeah he's you know that that pitchability and competitiveness like good good teams have several of those guys in mm-hmm. college um and i think he's a guy that is just because he's so competitive that he's going to be a guy that's going to be able to have a chance to pitch early um in what role that would be i'm not you know you don't know yet but he's got a, a durable frame um and a good breaking ball that you know can you know i could see him being in that role kind of like tanner witt was uh, as a freshman where he's you know kind of the the bridge guy um, you know, and obviously that'll depend upon what happens with the draft and the portal and all that kind of stuff. But he's a guy that, you know, I would expect is going to lock some innings as a freshman for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, kind of staying, well, going down to Friendswood, another kid that's been really impressive and kind of blew up, I guess, is the last year was uh, Easton Tumas, right? I, mm-hmm. I think he's pretty high on y'all's, y'all's list. He's, he's done really well. He's got a a really strong arm and he seems like he has a really good makeup. I haven't seen him in person or talked to him, but um, from the videos I've seen is he's been impressive. Yeah. He, um, you know, he had a good high school season as a junior. And then in the summer, I think the stuff started to tick up even more. Um, I saw him down at the, um, the, the Texas Scouts Association has like a summer all-star game type deal. That's that was in Sugarland this year. And he was up to 94 there, but his slider was up to 85. And it was, it was one of the better sliders I saw um, all summer. And um, he's kind of lanky. I think he's still going to grow into his frame some more. Uh, I think there's going to be a bit, the ability to throw strikes. Um, you know, he's got a future starters profile, I think, but he, he is a guy that um, if it's like, Hey, you know what, you're not going to be in the weekend mix early on, but we can throw you in the back end of a bullpen, just kind of let you air it out um kind of similar you know he's not a sinker guy well he he does have some run but he kind of reminds me a little bit stuff in maybe future role rides as nolan kingham um you know a guy that you could throw in the back end and he could elevate his fastball and that slider was just devastating but you know long term he's a he's a he's a starter long term um but that was a really good get um you know he was the u of h commit and he, he his stuff just really took off um, in the summer. And he, he's a guy that I think is, even though he's behind Hamilton a little bit on our list, I think that he's in the small group of guys that I think scouts are going to go see early on and see if, Hey, do we need to send somebody else in to, to take a look at this? Uh, because um, he might warm up and, and bump a 97 or something like that in the spring. And then you're going to have yeah. people running in there and figuring out what, what they need to do with it. But uh, another one of those guys that I think that you you really want to build a lot of your recruiting class with these types of guys that are really good, good enough to get scouted, but probably not good enough to sign, but can go to to impact your program right away when they show up on campus. Yeah, he's um, I mean, I, I first saw him because I saw the Friendswood team on film and that that team's absolutely loaded. I mean, They're loaded. So much yeah. talent. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um but I, I had a couple of folks, uh, scouts, talk about him recently, and they said they're really excited to see what he does this coming spring because, like you said, they think he can bump it up a little bit even more, and he's going to grow into that frame. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, it'd be fun to watch him progress and kind of grow into that. So, Yeah, I'd be surprised yeah. if they're not playing in round rock again um, in, in the state in the state championship. They're really, really yeah, good. Yeah, that, that whole team is just – Or excuse me, the dish. Yeah, dish. Dish, yeah. Around rock. Which true? No, which ones are a no. dish and which ones are a round rock? Four A is the only one at the dish. Okay, so Sinton was yeah. that there. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, for for Easton, like he, you never want to, you never want to scout or get get your full opinion on for recruiting based on video. But he's one of those guys that if you scroll through his Twitter and you see a couple of clips of that slider, you're just yeah. like, whoa. <laughs> like, I mean, like that that's like going to perk some people up. And it, like you said, get some people in there to see him for sure, because that is, you know, the, the swing and miss on some of that is ugly from some guys. And it, it has real, real movement on it. So, yeah, like you said, he's a guy that his best baseball is definitely in front of him. Um mm-hmm. And, you know, he, he's a guy, like you said, that he's going to have some early interest uh, in the spring. And, you know, for, Texas will need to be watching that to hopefully doesn't take off too much because it, he, he'll he be in that mix. You know, he's yeah. a guy that can 
that has the stuff and the frame to make that jump to where it could be scary. But um, that was a great pickup uh, getting him from Houston, but he he's, he's poised to have a big year and he's on a good team. So he's going to be on the big stage quite a bit. So that'll be, yeah. that'll be interesting to follow. Yeah. He'll get a lot of attention just from being on that Friendswood team for sure. So yeah. yeah. Um, staying down in that area, the, <laughs> the giant six, eight, two, what a two sixty or so Hayden Morris out of Conroe. I mean, he's, He's a big old boy. I, you know, you always worry about those big, big frame, tall kids that you know, where's the, the reliability and where or not necessarily the reliability, but the repeatability. Um, what have y'all seen from him? Yeah, he's, he's big, man. Um, he's imposing on the mound. It's, it's definitely a presence out there. And, and I think he kind of likes to pitch that way too. I mean, it's, it's a classic kind of power pitcher type mold. Uh, he's a guy I saw in the summer at that T, that same um, TSA event, and then in the in the fall with that Dodger scout team that that Hudson Hamilton was on. And uh, the curveball is 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 already flashing plus. Um, it's a it's a really good pitch. You know, I saw him pitch against San Jack, and they were having a lot of problems with the breaking ball. Um, and I think it's really exciting for Texas because I think there's going to be some things they can do with the shape of the fastball and efficiency in the delivery and there's there's a there's still some velocity that's kind of hidden in there that he just doesn't know how to get to yet which is very very common for high school pitchers yeah um and uh you know he, he's we'll see what kind of role he fits long term he's got he's got the power pitchers starting mold but he's also a guy that i think that if you you know threw him in the back end and say hey throw as hard as you can and throw that curveball um yeah. you know go for it but uh he do he does have I, I believe a four pitch mix i mean it's it's distinct slider distinct curve change up and fastball um and i think that you know once texas gets him on campus i don't think he's going to end up being a pro guy once texas gets him on campus um it's it's a it's an attractive piece of clay to work with because there's a lot that they're going to be able to tap into um and, and he could really take off potentially yeah well you know coach coach pierce obviously has that uh, that history with the bigger pitchers mm -hmm. back when he was at Rice. Um, so, you know, those are, those are guys that you definitely want to take a chance on because, you know, if they click and it's, and it's, and it's right and it's consistent, like they can be a, a devastating weapon for, for a starting rotation. I mean, he, that's what coach Pierce won a national championship with at Rice. So you, you can see what, what people like about him. And it'd be interesting to see, like, you know, I don't, I don't, we don't know yet what Woody's strengths are. Um, and, and that could very well be it. You know, a guy that's been around some, some really tall pitchers in his career. Um, he's had a couple really big guys at San Jack, but also yeah. on the playing side, he's been around those guys. So it'll be interesting to see like what his sweet spot is um, with these pitchers as they come in. But, you know, you're, you had a, you're going to have a lot of uh, versatility based on the guys yeah. that you signed. There's different bodies, different pitch types. So uh, that'll be something that we get to watch over the next couple of years. It'll be exciting. I think, you know, physically he kind of, he kind of looks like what I imagine Jackson Rutledge looked like when he was <laughs> right. That know, was, was that was the guy, main guy. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's, you know, could be some similarities there for sure. Yeah. Um, before we head out, staying on pitchers before we head out West, uh, you know, a kid that I've, I've seen a couple of times on video and, you know, I really like what I've seen the kid out of Wisconsin, Cole Selvig. Um, you know, he's one of those intriguing kids that you're like, Wisconsin, what, what are you doing? But then you look at him on tape and you're like, okay, yeah, that, you know, he looks like he has the tools. What have y'all been able to see any of him or what, what have y'all seen of him? Yeah, we saw him at, we saw him at area code. He was playing with the, the White Sox squad that was just yeah. a loaded Midwest group. And I, I joked that he was like the smallest pitcher on the roster, even though he was like six foot 190. And it's just a bunch of behemoths out there. Yeah. Um, you know, Wisconsin's like sneakily good for baseball. Like, I, I don't know like what it is. Like, you know, Jared Kelenic was from there. And um, there's a kid from moved from Flower Mound, Sam Erickson, that's really good in the 2024 pass from Wisconsin. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he was impressive. I mean, sharp slider up to, to 83 miles an hour, a guy that worked in the low nineties through strikes competed well. Um, I, I was impressed. Um, you could see why Texas went up to Wisconsin to get an arm like that. Um, I think he's going to be one of those guys that probably similar to Hudson Hamilton, that it's probably gonna be able to compete from the jump just because of the breaking ball and the, and the strike throwing potential, 
um, you know, the physicality that he's going to have there. But um, yeah, he, he was impressive when we saw him out in San Diego. Yeah, everyone that I've talked to up that in that area has said like his just kind of that makeup on the mound. He's just kind of that the guy you don't want to see on the mound on a Friday night because he's you know he's coming in with a plan and he's gonna you know stick to that plan and, and do really well. So um, it'll be interesting to see kind of how he continues to develop. So yeah, well that you know that's that's the thing that you're gonna bank on with a lot of guys from that part of the country and you know Vanderbilt was a program that really started focusing guys in the northern part of our country just you know and the exciting thing is is like a lot of those guys don't haven't logged the type of innings that yeah. most of the kids from texas yeah. have um which is a good thing in a lot of ways i think um you know for one there's you know he's probably not too stuck in his ways to where he's able to make some adjustments a little bit easier than the, than some guys that have played nothing but baseball their whole career um and you know, it's just they, they haven't seen the level of competition day in, day out. Now, obviously, he's been in a in a setting like area code where it's the best of the best um, for a couple of days. But, you know, he like in all likelihood, he's not facing the same kind of guys on a weekly basis that Hudson Hamilton and Hayden Morris and those guys mm-hmm. are in, the, in districts like that. So uh, it, it, that that's always something to watch with those guys um, is that jump in competition. Um, but guys that are born competitive they just get after it like we've seen we've seen a lot of those guys and you know you're starting to see a lot more of these I mean it's it's been going on for a while for some from just for some different programs but it's kind of interesting you know I know Sean saw him you know a couple of years ago and jumped on him so he, he's been a guy that's been in the fold for a while but uh, yeah. like Dustin said you know he's he's got good stuff he he looks really competitive uh, so it'll be exciting to see what he does when he gets on campus yeah for sure um, so heading out west for the pitchers, you know, Orange Lutheran continues to give to Texas. Uh, you know, Evan Miranda, he's a he's a bigger bodied guy. He's, he's got some good spin. What have, what have y'all seen from him? Yeah, another guy we saw out in San Diego. Um, you know, he's he's physical. Um, he's physical. I think he's I think he's mature. I think that he, you know, given where he is in his development, um, probably hope that that's a guy that can show up and start throwing some bullpen innings for you, for you from the jump. Um, he was up to 93 miles an hour. We saw him out, out of San Diego. Um, he's got a lot of confidence in the slider kind of reminded me of Selvig in terms of stuff, but the physical outlooks that were a little bit different and maybe the future roles as well. Yeah. Um, but I think he's going to be a guy that, that throws hard. I think he's going to have that. He's always going to have that slider um, and probably going to be a guy that I think, you know, as we know from watching last year's group, um, you can never have too many strike throwers potentially yeah. in the bullpen with an out pitch. Yeah. So I think that that's probably where he's going to carve out his role early on. Um, and then that's that might just be end up where he's sticking because I could see him having some success there. Yeah. Uh, but a guy that, you know, probably going to be a guy that bumps it into the mid 90s once he kind of gets into a college strength program and things like that. And he's always going to have that slider to work with. That was kind of what I took away from him as well. Is you, you talk about the the physical maturity. If he can bump up that that fastball by mm-hmm. just a little bit, you know, it it'll really help offset that slider that he has and uh, that kind of the back end or the bridge guy to to get to the back end. I think is a really you know strong position for him going forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, being like you said, being at Orange Lutheran, you know, we know who he's played for. Uh, yeah. We know the atmosphere and the types of games he's played in. So he's He's got he's had that big game experience already. Um, he's been a guy. He's that, been famous for a long time. Yeah, yeah he's been around. And, yeah. Yeah. And so he's, you know, he like Dustin said, he's a strike thrower. Um, he knows how to pitch. And, you know, he, he's a guy that I'd be shocked if he didn't throw a lot of innings as a freshman, to be honest. So, I mean, you know, there are a lot to like there. You know, the pedigree coming from Orange Lutheran playing for Coach Borba, obviously a huge deal. Um, and, you know, he's been on the scene for a long time. And a lot of time those guys you know, they, they, they've, they've seen the pressure, they've dealt with it. Um, and, and if, if you can do that early on at Texas, you're going to be in good shape. So and it's yeah. definitely helpful. Sure. Yeah. Anytime you've been coached by coach Borba, you know, you're, you're doing yeah. all right, especially if you're playing yeah. for OLU. So that's right. Uh, they play against all the, all the big teams out West and even, you know, nationally. So, um, you know, one guy I don't, I, tr- I actually don't know much about is George Zaharias out of, out of Menlo park. Uh, it's kind of like Stanford area, is that, isn't it? 
Yes, yes, yeah. That Menlo Atherton School is a very well known school up there. Um, you know, he's he's a guy that we committed, you know, early. Um, physical kid, uh, just you know, he he's a very academic. Also, you know that that part of the country right there around Stanford, around Menlo, um, just you know, it's it's known for that. Uh, but he's a guy that I think Sean identified really early and jumped on him. Um, sky's the limit. I know, I know when we first took him, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of thought that he would probably never show up. Um, but he's, you know, I think he's going to have a definite chance to show up now. Um, mm -hmm. has a lot of baseball background in his family, uh, and has a, a long track record of success at, at Menlo Atherton. So, yeah. Um, he's a guy too, that, like you said, he's, he, he's definitely a guy that you take a flyer on and hope he gets on campus and, and continues, you know, he's like, I think he's listed six, three, one ninety. Um, mm -hmm. so Bigger good, good frame. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he, that was a good get. I mean, any, anytime you go up that part of the country, um, you know, there's good baseball, there's a lot of, you know, good programs out there, but it is interesting. Like, you know, now that I guess it's official that UCLA and USC are going to the big 10, <laughs> I mean, I think you're just going to continue to see a raid of California by oh, yeah. the, by the SEC and some other Southern uh, programs and Big 12 continue to. But um, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, what kind of stranglehold. I mean, UCLA is the big one um, as far as like kind of dominating California recruiting goes uh, it, from inside the state. I mean, Stanford's different. They're, they, they recruit a lot nationally yeah. and they have a much – they. I mean, obviously they're limited on who they can go after because of the academics, but it is going to be interesting to see, you know, I was going through some of the state of California lists, um, you know, of which obviously George was on, but like, it's, it's, it's interesting to see where the, you're starting to see a lot more kids go South um, than you did in the past. Like there's a lot of SEC and M starting to get kids from California. Yeah. We've long got kids from California. So um, I think the surprising one was Texas Tech. I, I was looking at their classes and they've got quite a foothold over there. And I mean, TCU's obviously done well in California and they they really yep. loaded up in this last class. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see some of those, you know, more traditional Texas schools really, you know, take that strong foothold, which I mean, that obviously helps with the NIL and then just the cost of education, kind of how what you've talked about before, Drew. But uh, yeah, yeah it'll, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like long term for for some of the Cali schools. Yeah, it'll. I don't think it's going to look you, good for him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. You, you, but, but UCLA um, will be the interesting one um, because they they do such a good job of recruiting early. They get on yeah. those top guys, especially in, in Southern California, and just lock them down. Now USC, uh, that'll be interesting. You know, Tulo may have dodged a bullet there. Um, <laughs> you know, because he, if you remember, like he he turned down the job of what I don't know a week before they announced that they were going to the Big Ten. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that, that would, I mean, I, I'm pretty confident that he would have made that a winning program no matter what, but that definitely doesn't help them as they try to get off the ground because they're, they're going to be behind in some areas for a while. Cause because of the Olympics, I think that's going to affect their facility. Um, and you know, these, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, uh, for yeah, sure. That, but yeah, this, this isn't going to help. I know that. I, I really like the grand Canyon coach and I think it's actually kind of a perfect position for him to go to, but yeah. Um, yeah, their, their facilities have a long way to go to, to really be competitive at all in the, in the landscape, but yeah, maybe the Olympics really do change some of that around and we'll see what kind of investment they put in as, as Lincoln Riley builds the football team back up to being some of the successful money usually flows downhill. So maybe they're able to help parlay that. So it'd be, it'd be interesting. Yep. No, no doubt. Um, let's, uh, I guess, take a look at the shortstops because they got a couple of them. Um, you know, we got we got another Arduan coming to the to the dish. So Sammy boy is is coming in from Louisiana. What um yeah, I I I've seen him a couple times live. You know, he's he's an athletic kid. Uh he's starting to grow into that body a little bit more and show a little more arm strength. What have y'all seen at the plate? I mean, we all know that he's he's pretty good defensively, right? So from a from a batting perspective, what kind of future do you think he has? Well, it's, it seems like he's, I mean, people have, Drew, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like people have always kind of looked at him and thought that he had more of a 
prospect outlet than Silas did. And we yeah. know what kind of hitter Silas turned into. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that there's probably a little more hitting potential um, than Silas, um, probably just a little bit, maybe a tick better athlete. I mean, obviously being a guy that can potentially stick in the middle of the infield compared to to a catcher, not knocking Silas at all. I, I love <laughs> Silas. I, I thought that he was a, he was a great get where he went um, yeah. in the draft. But um, it, it's always kind of been like, hey, wait till you see Sam, you know, like wait till you see him swing the bat and things like that. So yeah, um, it, it, it'll be curious to see how he fits into the mix with, I mean, they've just got, they've really loaded up on middle of the diamond um, guys, which is what you should do. Um, yeah. But I, I think hitting wise, I think it's got a chance to be, maybe a tick better hit tool um, than his brother. But I think you're going to see a lot of those things that, that, that Silas had that were just kind of innate and probably goes back to, you know, his dad's background, like pitch recognition and using the whole field and, and feel for the barrel and, you know, working counts. Like, I think that's what some of the stuff you're going to see from Sam as well um, is, is kind of a more polished advanced hitting approach for his age. Yeah. He came yeah, across we, as a very mature kid. A couple of times I talked to him and just in terms of, the way he approaches the game, obviously he's learned a lot from his brother. Um, he's yeah. learned a lot from his dad having, mm -hmm. you know, been around baseball all his life. So yeah, he's, as you said, they, you know, the, the squad or the, the staff loves to take a shortstop or middle infield guy and then, you know, span him out. Where do they, that's why you should do in? it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the way to do it. Build up the middle, but uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of what role he has coming in and, and learning from a couple of guys that, you know, potentially in front of him have a really bright future as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we talked about this a little bit on our podcast yesterday, but I like, I, I've always been a big fan of, you know, taking brothers, siblings. Um, obviously we, you know, we talked the having a dad that's played in the big leagues matters. Um, I, I remember when I was going through it, it was always frustrating to me as a player. I was like, what this guy's getting this like tick up in <laughs> scouting because, his dad played in the big leagues. Like I don't understand it, but the older you get and the more you're around it, the more you understand it just because those kids that have grown up, you know, quote unquote in the life, you know, in a, in a big league clubhouse, like you, you saw it a lot with the Clemens boys. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they just, they just know their way around the clubhouse. They, yeah. they, they know what a big league season's like. They, they just understand what it takes a lot of times to play at that level. And that matters. Um, and then you throw in the, the uh the added layer of having a brother that has already played in the program um you know i played yeah. with some i've played with a couple groups of siblings and then we had several on uh when i was on staff but it matters like they just have this you know a, a sense of comfort and understanding of the program and you know coach so and so yells at you for the first time you can go to big brother and be like how should i take that <laughs> you know yeah. like and in big brother can say hey man like just part of it, you're going to get it every day. So just shut up and go back to work or, or man, you really messed up. <laughs> you might want to go in the mm -hmm. office and talk to them, but you know, just the, just that level of comfort that they have, uh, you know, he's been to the ballpark. He's been in all the big atmospheres, you know, he's, he knows what it means to an extent, at least to, to, to wear the uniform. Like, and that matters at Texas a lot more than it does in a lot of places, um, you know, for, a host of reasons, but it does matter. And yeah. just, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough place to play. Texas is a really tough place to play um, in a good way. It makes you better for the next level. And if you can, if you can make it at Texas, that bodes well for your professional career, because it is like playing at a professional in a professional setting, because there's a lot of pressure. Um, and there's, you know, you see a lot of guys that, you know, came in and couldn't do it at Texas and went elsewhere and did well. Um, you know, and then a lot of those guys didn't do well at the next level. And it just kind of, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good sign if you can come in and, and really handle playing at Texas, because it, it is a lot of pressure, you know, and yeah. that makes, it makes you better. Or it makes you fold. Um, just kind of like we talked about with that draft pressure, you know, it, it typically makes you go one way or the other. Um, <laughs> there's not a lot of in between with that. So, you know, Sam's a guy that he's been there, he's seen it, you know, he's got, brother uh silas in his corner he's got dad who's you know played all over the big leagues for a long time in his corner so you know he he's a guy that i would expect to come in and contribute pretty early to be honest so um you know you talk about talking about being an athlete dion or I mean, I'll, i'm just gonna call him d because i'll never 
pronounce his first name right, but D <laughs> Kennedy out of Preston Wood. Um, you know, that guy can actually absolutely fly. I, I could see him, even though he's listed as a shortstop, you know, he he potentially is one of those guys that could easily translate to the outfield. He's got that kind of speed and athleticism. Um, he seems like he's, from what I saw from last year to this year, he seems like he's really come on though as a kind of a total baseball player in general. What what have y'all seen from him? Because I'm sure y'all have seen him in person a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for for me, I saw him play, you know, this will be his first year at Preston Wood. Uh, and I think that that's going to be a really, really good thing for him playing for James Blade over there. Um, James, you know, he was at, uh, Coach Blade was at Oklahoma State. He's one of the most well-respected guys in the Dallas area when it comes to baseball. Um, you know, his son's a pro player, like he, and just a great guy, runs a really good program. Um and, you know, like I said, he, that, that'll help him. That's a really good move for him. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the thing about D uh, to me is that he's a, like, he is a lot more advanced as a hitter um, than I ever would have expected. You know, if, yeah, he's got a similar profile. They're not the same player by any means, but a similar profile to, you know, a Dylan Campbell, like a, an advanced hitter early um, that you got to figure out where they're going to play. But yeah. that finding a way to get that bat in the lineup, it it may prove to be pretty important because he he can hit. Um, we got to see him quite a bit on the scout team uh, this fall, um, playing against some older college competition, and he was good. We saw him handle the bat well in in San Diego at Area Code. So, um, yeah. you know, it, that's one of the toughest skills that you're going to ever come across in sports is being able to hit. So if you find those guys that can hit and it's natural and they know how to do it in advanced level at this age, you take a chance on them and then you'll find somewhere to put them, especially if they continue to hit like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of the better right-handed swings in, in the class. Uh, it's, it's really efficient. It's really quick. Um, it, it's, as Drew said, it's, it's very advanced. Uh, you, you don't you don't really come across many swings each year that that look and play the way that one does you know and like Drew said like you, you just kind of figure out where he plays defensively I think it's probably going to be second um, maybe center um, obviously he has a speed and athleticism to to profile in the middle of the diamond that way but he's, I think he's going to be one of those guys that the bat's going to get him into a lineup somewhere. And then you've got to figure out where he best profiles defensively, but it's easier to do that when you're working with a good athlete who can run as opposed to a big hulking guy. That's just landed <laughs> to being a, maybe a corner guy or a DH type profile or things like that. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's an exciting player. And, you know, we saw it in the fall, he's got some sneaky pop too, like to the pool mm -hmm. side, we got mm -hmm. a good video of him really getting into one of DBU and pulling a Homer. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's got to get, power right now but like he he's shown that he you know he'll pull a mistake and yank it over the left field wall so yeah i think he's he's got a little a little untapped power in there that he's probably going to grow into at the next level but um yeah just we, we've seen him a few times fun player but man that right-handed swing if you're a texas fan i haven't seen it on film um go find some film or preferably our film um <laughs> yeah. and, and just and just check it out because it's it's a really pretty right-handed high school swing yeah he's definitely a kid i think you know give a give him a year in the in the program let him kind of get used to that that big environment um you know like you said drew preston wood will help with that kind of yeah. used to a very strict routine um but yeah super super exciting future for d he's a he's a fun one to watch mm -hmm. um you know, you talk about those bigger kind of shortstop guys or up the middle lane. Allen's another one where, you know, I've saw him. He he takes a really mature approach at the plate. He's got some sneaky power from what I've seen. Um, what is he? He's playing for Geyer, I believe, high school this yeah, year. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. What uh, what what have y'all? What's the scouting report on him? Yeah, I mean, I think you know this this last year he's been a lot more of a corner guy. Um, he'll probably be a guy that I would think if he really hits ends up at first base, but we saw him, he performed really well in one of our biggest events last summer, um, hit one of the farthest home runs I saw hit all summer in one of the biggest games. Um, so he, he can hit, um, you know, footwork. I mean, I, he's going to have to improve his footwork probably to stay at third base. Uh, but the thing is he, he started to work at both places. So if he comes in and there's a spot at first base for him, 
Um, he will have played there, so it won't be a new position, which I think will be helpful to him. Uh, but the bat, the bat play is like he, he yeah. he's definitely been a guy that's um, shown he can hit. Um, and I think he'll have a chance to hit in college for sure. Yeah, he was really strong summer performer. Um, there's some definite power in there. It's it's probably I don't think it's the most right handed power in the class, but you're not calling many names before you get to him in, in terms of the way he can impact the baseball. Yeah. Um, he uh, showed better plate coverage than I'd seen in the past. Um, you know, even against good pitchers, there were a couple of times we saw him where a pitcher was just giving, you know, his team a lot of issues, uh, both with the, the Blue Jays scout team and, and Dolan's Dodgers and Dolan's Dodgers are loaded uh, summer yeah. team. And he got in there and just, you know, is a really good at bat. And that's always like watching guys. It's like, OK, when the rest of your team is purely like clearly struggling to deal with this stuff because they're seeing a good guy on the mound. Like, is there yeah. anybody that sees it better than everybody else and and he kind of had that that vibe to him so I think he's going to be able to get to the power some yeah it'd just be a matter of where he fits defensively and, and how much it improves there and you know for a bigger guy I think I think he moves okay um and I think that from what we know about him I'd be surprised if he you know he doesn't put in the work and and um uh, and really gets the most out of what he has in terms of his skill and things like that but um power right-handed bat I think he's going to have a chance to hit. Um, it's probably going to translate. It's just, it's just a matter of where do you fit him in? Is it first base? Is it DH? Is it third base? Or yeah. heck, maybe you, you throw him out there in a corner outfield spot in the fall just to see what it looks like. And, and maybe he catches on to that sort of thing because, you know, you're just trying to get the bat in the lineup. For sure. Um, so switching up and speaking of the outfield, you know, Texas took, what, three kids. Um, one hasn't signed, so we won't spend too much time there but uh you know the local kid Blake Peterson he's an outfielder from Westlake you know I've seen him quite a bit he he was obviously injured last year so he didn't really get to play but you know coming off his sophomore year he was hitting what in the high 400s and <clears throat> he's got a kid uh that you know he, he you see the potential there for hitting um wh wh where does he kind of rank I know not having a junior year kind of really hurts the the projection yeah, he, he ended up playing. Um, I saw him a, a, a couple of times at Westlake this past year. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, another year removed from, you know, playing football and things like that, that we're really going to see um, this everything kind of blend together for a really, really good season because he's shown some really good flashes. He's got he's got really good barrel feel like he 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 finds the barrel at, at a rate that's a little bit higher than the most of his peers um it's just like when he when he makes contact when he impacts the baseball yeah. it's usually coming off the bat pretty well um but i think in the past you know it was like a hey there's a really all-around skill set here and then it's kind of trended to more bat just because of the injuries and things like that but i think there's a chance that you know as he gets further removed and gets you know stays healthy and matures and things like that i think you'll start to see that that outfield defense start to, to, to tick up again, but uh, it's, it's good barrel feel. Um, you know, he's, he's going to hit and um, you know, yeah. when it comes off the bat, it, it, it really flies for a guy that's, that's not yet really, you know, added all that muscle and that weight and fully matured and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For me with Blake, like, you know, the, the thing that slowed him down has been the injuries. Um, this is the first year that he didn't play football too yeah. so that'll help you know I know he spent a lot of time working to get healthy uh get stronger and really have a chance to um have you know get off to a good start with his with his high school season and you know he, he like Dustin said he can hit you know mm -hmm. there's no question about that and getting the strength back and um uh, being healthy is going to be a big deal for him and one thing that I always you know I, I used to always notice this but Blake's a kid that you know was basically came out of the womb in burn orange right? yeah, and for sure and and his family goes to all the bowl games like you know that they they love texas and the kids that grew up in that um you know and i'm probably you know biased because i was one of them but you know the kids that grew up in that their whole life number one they understand it and it means something to them and yeah. those guys always play you know fight above their punching weight um, and, you know, I think Blake's a kid that 
you know, he's going to be a ringleader. Uh, I know that he's been responsible for getting a lot of guys down to Austin and kids go down there and stay at their house. And, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's crucial to have guys like that on winning teams. Um, and, you know, we've seen a lot of those guys that, you know, by some of the recruiting services or rankings or whatever, uh, you know, they, they may not be as high, but they come in and because it means so much, you know, they, they set the tone and they, they perform because it does mean so much. And, you know, it's baseball is a hard sport and you're going to go through a lot of times when it's no fun. <laughs> you're going to have a lot of no fun days at the office, but those kids that are willing to stick it out um, and push through because they love Texas, that makes a lot of difference. And you have to have kids like that on a good team. We always have. And that's, that's, you know, I think, like I said, Blake can hit. So he's going to have a chance to get in there and prove his role, but you know that you're going to get everything you've got from him. And um, I'm excited to see him go through a whole spring healthy this year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, you know, I really like the, <clears throat> the projectability at the hit, uh, the plate and kind of what you said, he's, he's definitely a kid that's been born and burnt orange. You know, I know his dad fairly well and uh, it's, it'll be fun to see him kind of get in there. And I think he's long-term, he's one of those glue guys, you know, he's a top step kid that's going to really help out the program in whatever way the coaches can, can utilize him. So that'll yeah. be fun to watch. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Texas has a couple of catchers signed, um, one of whom is, is one of my favorite athletes in the, the entire class, actually, Oliver Service out of Michigan. You know, you talk about sports kids, and it's usually football and baseball, right? Or maybe sometimes basketball. The guy plays hockey, he plays football, yeah. he plays baseball. He does a little bit of everything. He's, a, he's just kind of a super athlete, and I don't know that he sticks behind the plate necessarily long term. I, I think the staff needs to figure out where he goes, but... Um, you know, super, super athlete that's, he, he can definitely hit the ball. Right. And um, he's one of those kids that you talk about going out and finding and it's like, yeah, we got to get this kid in and figure out where, where we can put him. So. Yeah. I thought that was a really good get for, you know, what you mentioned, the multi-sport background, something Drew and I talk about a lot is a lot of those times when those guys finally start focusing and specializing on one thing, their skill really takes off. And when you have an athlete like that, you have a, a swing like that, um, there's a chance that it, it takes off and he's been a, I, I want to know where he finds the time to do all this stuff. Cause he's a pretty decorated, <laughs> yeah. he's a pretty decorated summer baseball guy too. Yeah. I mean, he's got, uh, you know, I think he was, he played in the Hank Aaron series, yeah. um, which is becoming a really cool popular deal. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's been on the baseball scene for a while. Um, so he clearly can manage his time, but I thought it was a great get, like, we'll see where he ends up defensively. You know, yeah. catchers are by far the hardest position to evaluate on the prep side. Yeah. Um, but I, I wouldn't rule it out. But just like that kind of athlete with that kind of skill, usually you see those guys that get on campus and like it takes off because it's just like, oh, I'm not focusing on nine different things now. <laughs> uh, I'm really specializing on one thing. And, uh, you know, and I, I guess, you know, if, if Texas gets in any fights, um, he's probably gonna be able to contribute in that area as well, which, uh, which is always a plus you need some guys like that on your team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely bringing a mentality to the plate where yeah, you know, he's ready to go for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy because he's a guy that he basically recruited Texas. So the other way around, he showed up at a camp and was just like, just wanted to go to Texas and, um, they made it work. And, it, it's going to end up being a huge get because like, you know, the, the hockey background is interesting because our last big hockey player was Mark Payton. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of time, those guys, they have really good hand-eye coordination. Um, everyone strong that's ever hands, been around, strong wrists. Yep. Yeah. And everyone that's ever been around the kid loves him. Um, yeah. Really, really good student. Um, supposedly awesome family. I haven't met them, but I've never heard any one do anything but rave about them um they are he, he's supposed to be just an awesome kid um and like Dustin said you know getting him in this kind of program and being a baseball only guy is going to be you know I, you may see him just absolutely take off but mm -hmm. he's a guy that I know that they're real excited about yeah you know he's not being a Texas kid right it's usually harder to get eyes on him in in person and you don't necessarily have the connections of the folks around him you know scouts or otherwise but every single person I've talked to has absolutely raved about him just in terms of the mental makeup there, you know, being prepared, coming in with a plan and, um, you know, having that three sport ability is, is a huge thing for him. And yep. yeah, that's a good point about Mark Payton, you know, the hands in the wrist, the eye hand coordination that's, it goes a long way in baseball as well. So it'll be, it'll be fun to see where he ends up. Cause I think he's a kid that, 
you know, people may not pay attention to because he's from Michigan, which is not necessarily a huge baseball state and comes in and blows up. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's an exciting get. Um, and then, of course, I mean, I think most people are that have followed Texas or not Texas, but just baseball in general for the prep level are very familiar with Nicholas Sanders out of out of Waco. You know, he's been on Team USA. He's been a, a very prominent figure in terms of the travel circuit. So, you know, what <clears throat> I guess what are your thoughts on the chances he makes it to campus versus, you know, do you think he'll be rated high enough as a catcher? As you all said, it's it's very hard to, you know, really scout that position um, at the prep level. But what are your thoughts on Nick? Tools. Yeah. Um, I mean, loud tools, um, whether or not he catches, I think it's going to come down to how much he wants to catch yeah. uh, because he definitely has the skill to catch. Um, I don't know that answer, but I know he can catch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He doesn't catch all the time, but he's such a good athlete. You know, I mean, like he can play a number of spots, like you can put him out in the outfield and he's going to be just fine. Um, but, you know, I think, the, the catching side of it's just going to come down to whether he wants to do it or not. Uh, but the guy can absolutely crush a baseball. Um, yeah. That's it's, it's a gift for him. Um, not a lot of people can match his physical talents. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see um, what, what he ends up doing. I mean, he's a guy that could very well get drafted high enough and, and sign uh, just based on talent alone. Yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, at, there'll be some question on the competition that he'll face um, this spring. So, you know, he's, it may be a deal where he has to be good on the right day um, to get in that mix again. But I mean, there's no denying the talent he's had it. Um, it's there. And, you know, like you said, the catching part is just going to come down to how much he wants to do it. Cause he can do it. I mean, we yeah. can do it. So. And that was, I, I think y'all mentioned it earlier. It's like the kind of the, the penalty for having been scouted so much so young like he's been a kid that's been on that team USA and has been around for a while it's have, has he kind of been overlooked to some degree is you know is this is the way I've seen him so mm -hmm. gotta be interesting to see what happens come draft time but um yeah he's he's a fun player to watch and he's a you know he's a really fun guy to talk to right you know he let me know one day he's like hey I'm at the dish you know you want to meet up and so it was it was good to get his chance to sit down and chat with him so yeah, it's it's gonna be it's it's easy to fall in love with that right hand swing and the torque and the bat speed and the power. So he's he's definitely gonna get scouted from that perspective um, because it's you know when you when you start especially in this era it's power pitching and power hitting that that make the money unless you're a middle of the diamond player that could potentially stick it at shorter center. So. Um, he certainly got the power thing working for him too, with that swing and things like that. It'll be, it'll be interesting. Like Drew said that, I mean, I, I don't know how much he like wants to catch. Um, he could do it. He's also athletic enough to profile a couple other places as well, but yeah, for sure. um, he's going to get scouted for the bat and that's going to be what scouts have to decide if they want to buy or not. I mean, he'll have to decide too, whether he wants to, to be a guy that, that signs and, sets a reasonable price and expectation or if he wants to, you know, price himself to college and bet on himself from there. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he's one of those kids, um, obviously completely different roles. Right. But he's, he's, I almost view him like the the hitting version of, of Tanner Witt where the talent is there. He can be as, as good as he wants to be. It's, you know, does he want to take that time and develop a little more in college and then, you know, really make that big jump. So it'll be fun to watch. Um, yeah. So we'll head back to the Midwest. You know, this class has a bit of a Midwest flavor in terms of uh, Wisconsin and Michigan and then Illinois. Uh, again, another one of my favorite players to watch. I haven't got a chance to see him in person, but I've talked to him quite a bit. Uh, I've talked to folks around him quite a bit. And Ian Check, um, he was a bigger kid, profiles more third base or maybe even first base, but uh, a kid that can really hit the ball. He's he's played the summer circuit really well from what I've seen. Um uh, have y'all had a chance to see him much at all? Or I can't remember if he went to area codes or not. I don't think he did. I don't, th I don't think he did. Um, I'm not e extremely familiar with him. I just know that he's got the best signature by far of anybody <laughs> in the signing class um, with, with the little graphics they did on, on their yeah, yeah. check and the check. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. That was um, but yeah, it, 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 bigger like you said bigger guy i think he's gonna be a physical 
you know, that first guy where he ends up defensively. I think he's got some skill to kind of profile a number of places, kind of depending on where things go developmentally. But, um, you know, going up there and get a guy potentially that's probably going to have some power and, and be a physical presence from the right side in the batter's box. And uh, uh, maybe a little little reminiscent of Lane Allen, kind of. Uh, maybe that type of mold of a, of a hitter yeah. and uh, that can provide you some juice there. And, you know, you figure out where he fits defensively and move forward. Yeah, and he's another one of those, you know, born in UT, right? His if he's half as good as his sister was, has or has been for the UT softball team, then mm-hmm. a definite <laughs> take there, right? They take that, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no doubt. No, he he's physical. Um, you know, another one of those guys from the Midwest, northern part of the country that, you know, that development, those guys can always hit fastballs, right? Like we whenever we used to play the Big Ten teams, like you know, you're inside so much and you hit off a machine so much yeah. early on in, the, in in your season that you, if you can't hit a fastball and you're from that part of the country, like you're just not going to be very good. But so, I mean, you know, the physicality is there. Um, you know, he's got a good swing and he's a guy that, you know, he may get in a college program and just take off offensively. Um, haven't seen him move around on defense. So I, I don't know. I can't really speak to that too much, but I mean, the guy can definitely hit um, and you take a body like that. And, you know, obviously his sister has been at Texas, so he's been around and um, that that's always a plus for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, Probably one of the guys, I mean, he's obviously really well known for quite a while due to his dad, but you know, what a, what a summer he had for team USA is, is Casey Borba out of, out of Orange Lutheran. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen a stock or a, a, a draft stock go higher than his or on fire, just, just shooting up the draft boards lately. He's um, he's a really special talent from that third by side. And then obviously as a right-handed hitter, he, he can do everything at the plate. You know, he can hit for power. He can hit for numbers. It's, it's kind of that all around kid. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I can't, we, we I can't to... imagine there are better, many better hitters in California than, than him, yeah. maybe even nationally too. I mean, you mentioned it when you go do what he did for team USA, that's, it's a very, very loud uh, statement as to what you are as a player. Yeah. I mean, you talk about, you know, we talked about some with D candy, but I mean, when you talk, when you think advanced bat in this class, like it's him, like he's, he's a professional hitter. Um, and, you know, he's going to be in that group, the small group of this class that you're going to be sweating it out um, pretty, yeah. pretty far into the draft scene because he's um, he he can do that. <laughs> and he's got the pedigree yeah. and, and you're, there's not going to be any questioning of the makeup or the intangibles for Casey. But I mean, if they can find a way to get him to campus like he's going to be a guy that probably parks in the middle of the lineup as yeah. a freshman and never leaves. But yeah, he's. he's- He's one of those guys that, um, you know, you could definitely see a team taking a flyer on him in the second round and just calling it a day, knowing that they're getting a really advanced hitter. Um, and just, you know, let's go develop the tool, the rest of the tools. Cause he, as you said, he's going to be an instant impact kid. If he, if he does right. make it to campus, he's, he can hit. And, um, just that mental makeup, you know, having played for his dad and who's really well known and played for team USA and all the, yeah. you know, the work that he's done, it's, he's a special kid. So. Um, and then I guess the last guy, he was a, a former Kansas commit at one point. Um, and then he's a, you know, really projects as a first baseman or, um, DH, but, um, uh, you know, another huge body six, eight, uh, out of MJ Sweeney, uh, out of California, he's, he's got some power to him. So, you know, the coaches have to be looking at that thinking, well, what can we do defensively with him and turn and just turn the power loose. So, yeah, I know he came to a camp this summer, um, and, I mean, obviously we've talked about it. Having a big league dad matters. Having a big league all-star dad really matters. Um, and that's someone that you're always going to take a chance on. Um, he played on that Royal Scout team. So he, he's played with D. Kennedy. Uh, but, I mean, he's a monster. Like the, And he can hit. Like, I mean, when you look at some of the data and analytics of, of his hitting, I mean, <laughs> it's amazing that, like, a bigger program didn't take him sooner. And, you know, part of that may have been, he just may have been loyal to the Kansas program because he was committed there. But I mean, he's a guy that you definitely take a chance on uh, because he can do it. And if he, you know, continues to get more and more coordinated with that size, I mean, 
I mean, and you've seen like one of the things that's been different from our recruiting the last couple of years is they're starting to take some of these big physical corner guys. Um, whereas in the past, we went a little bit more for athleticism. But, you know, I think MJ is a guy that, I mean, when he gets a hold of it, it goes and he hits. And he's a lot more athletic than you would think just if you looked at his size, right? Like he can run a little bit. You've seen him leg out some extra base hits. Um, so that, which bodes well, like if he, if, if he continues to stay coordinated and really grow into his body and, you know, those, those numbers stay the same or get better offensively, like, you know, exit velocity stuff and yeah. this, you know, some of the more advanced analytics, like, I mean, he might be a guy that sits in the middle of your lineup for a while. Um, and you, you talk about his dad, you know, he, he comes across as just a very mature kid. He's been around baseball yeah. for a long time. He's just, yeah. you can tell he, he's comfortable at the at the park, right? He's, he comes in and he, nothing's going to surprise him or just really overwhelm. Right. So. Yeah. It, I mean, one of the smartest things you can do in baseball right now is bid on the sons of former standout. Big <laughs> yeah. it's like it's the hit rate for those guys right now is just, is just incredible. I got to wonder, like he might end up being like the tallest hitter Texas has had in program history. You know, like I don't, I can't think of many guys with, with his, with his height, yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know, that's some t- really tall pitchers, you know, King <laughs> yeah. Kasparics in the world and, and things like that. But I can't think of many hitters that, that were that big, but I can't think of any, six, say, like, we've seen some six, six and stuff in there, but not yeah. six, six. That's a big, yeah. I, I, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. Yeah. That, that other, you know, there weren't more big time programs in on him because like, it's just like, Okay, standout guy. He's got the data. His dad hit in the big leagues forever. Like, don't make it harder than it than it needs to be. Like, that's a that's a really good potential prospect. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's uh, they've got a fun mix, you know, with him and and you know, in Will Gasparino's dad being the scouting director for the for the Dodgers. Um. You know, pretty cool to have you know the MLB background guys, which Texas I think does a good job of of attracting those guys, just with Texas pedigree and and stuff like yeah. that. Um, it's always been an attractive destination for those guys that that either work in baseball or played to want to send their kids there because they know what it can prepare them for and, and what kind of platform it can be long term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the last kid was uh, was Gasparino. I, I don't think we talked about him, but you know he's listed as an outfielder, but he's six six. <laughs> he's a he's a physical presence out there. He's a big kid that um, you, you know. There's a lot of talent there. I know he played at a lot of the the big time summer programs uh, or um, events and. You know, he's definitely one of those guys that Texas could be heavily sweating on on draft day as well. Oh yeah, yeah. There, it's a lot of tools, and it, it's it's run, it's throw, it's defense, it's hit, it's maybe you know hit for power. Like it's you know, and for a six six guy, he's, he's coordinated, he's fluid. Um, you know, I, he's obviously going to be heavily scouted during the spring. So you know, it's just kind of they're going to have thing. he's going to have the they're going to. have he's probably going to have the most intel on him in the scouting. Uh, right. Yeah. Like, It'd be fascinating to anybody. see if the Dodgers take him. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and where they, where they potentially take him. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, they'll have that secret home video of him at home, you know, <laughs> doing right. Yeah. 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 They'll probably, gonna, the Dodgers will probably have some, some, uh, done their, some data and intel that the other organizations don't have, but he's a classic example of a really tooled up player that like, is a prime candidate to just take a massive jump his last year. And he's already really, really good. Yeah. But I, I think that he's still scratching the surface of what he could become. And uh, yeah, they're going to sweat that one. I think on the sweat list, he's probably right under Sakura um, when it, when it, when it comes to that sort of prospect status, but um, yeah, yeah really mean, exciting player. It was fun to see him just glide around the outfield in San Diego and, and move around the diamond. Yeah. When I, when I first saw him, I was like, Wait, kid six foot six six, and he's just you know, you're thinking, you know, lumber. No, he he really yeah. does glide. He's got that long stride on him. He uh-huh. just he he moves a lot better than you would expect. So um it'll be it'll be fun to see what happens there. But yeah, he's he's a good kid to watch. And as you said, bet on guys that have major league dads because they that's all the rage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean with Will, I mean, you talk about it's such an endorsement for the program to be getting mm-hmm. these sons of, you know, former big leaguers, guys that are high up in baseball. Um, you know, you've got O'Dowd, you've got Gasparino coming. Um, you know, and Dustin and I were talking about it. We were trying to figure out where we'd, I think we we landed on that if he were in Texas, he would have probably been fourth on our list. Yeah. 
um, behind Blake Mitchell, uh, obviously Sakura, and then uh, Barrett Kent, who's a big righty that might just see he he may pitch himself into the first round this year. Yeah. He's an Arkansas commit, but will probably come in in four around four in, in Texas. But I mean, it, there's <laughs> there's a lot to like. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, he'll he'll probably be one of the. I think there's three that you're probably really gonna sweat um, with. Obviously, with Sakura uh Gasparino and probably Borba um would be my guess and then we talked about that kind of next tier of guys like at Easton Toomey's um that Nick Sanders yeah yeah that that may that can they have a chance to really up their stock this spring or potentially set themselves up to go to school for sure so um yeah yeah it's a it's a good group it's an eclectic group uh when (laughs) you look at it you know yeah yeah. all different very shapes and sizes yeah. on the mound you've got a bunch of different skill sets uh so it'll be interesting to see how that you know continues to play out you know new recruiting coordinator uh new coaching staff um on the assistant side so it'll be it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that continues to take shape over the next couple of classes for sure yeah this is one of those classes that you could you notice that the the trend towards that bigger player you know they only have one kid that's listed as under six foot, he's at five eleven, and that's D. Um, right. And not not always are the the heights perfect, right? There's some kids that are five eleven, five ten, but yeah, you know, bigger physical, um, imposing lineup. The the one thing I noticed about the class that didn't bring in was a was a left true left handed pitcher this time. Um, so it'd be interesting to see, you know, if they if they go with a JUCO route or if they go to the portal to try to bring in some some left handed help. But yeah, you know, yeah. it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I think, you know, Dustin and I talk about that a lot. You know, the recruiting process, like, you know, are, I, I think you're going to start seeing some smaller classes uh, signed early because uh, I think people are just going to start building in a couple of spots to leave open for the portal. And you should. I mean, especially at a place like Texas that mm-hmm. has, you know, everything you could ever want for, um, when it comes to resources, NIL, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's it's a really enticing spot for a guy that, might go to a mid major and blow up, right? And yeah. and you know, you know you have a lot more information on those kids. I mean, it's just like professional scouting. Like the, the more info they have, the better typically. Um and if they go to college, you know, likelihood that you're going to have more advanced analytics, whether it's track man, uh, a lot more video from synergy and playing against different competition too. Yeah. Like I think it, it, it's smart to leave some some room for that. Um and yeah, I Texas think, has know, done really well in that transfer portal. You know, they've brought in some kids that have just knocked it out of the park. And so, yep. Um, yeah, no, we, we had obviously good experiences the last couple of years with some of those guys coming in. Obviously, Mike Antico was a big one uh, that played a huge role for us. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think, I mean, uh, Porter Brown might be that guy this year. Um, yeah. You know, they, another kid, you know, high character kid um, has had a track record of playing at the Power Five level. Um, you know, having some experience is big in, in college baseball. And, you know, with the last couple of years, college baseball has been older across the board, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, with, with all the COVID waivers and, you know, all that kind of stuff in the portal and all that, it, the teams that are going to win for the next couple of years are, are likely to have a lot more experience than they would have five or six years ago. Um, and, you know, with that comes some change in, in strategy. Uh, yeah. in recruiting so that, that'll be interesting to follow um, I mean I think we've seen it quite a bit you know this 24 class coming behind them this is the first you know like if you looked at the number of kids that have been recruited at this point for the 23 group versus the 24 group where they are now where the 23 group was last year yeah. I would imagine there is a I don't know what the numbers are but significant difference in numbers of 23s that were committed because you know yeah. I think some of these coaching staffs have shifted their recruiting strategy in the summer because they have to spend that first month almost in the portal. Um, (laughs) And that's recruiting guys from other schools. That's recruiting their own players to come back. Sometimes it means going to watch your own players in summer ball to make sure that no one else is there watching them. You know, that's reality right now. And so that, you know, we, we've never been a fan of the early, early recruiting. Um, and so far this seems to be like the only thing that has slowed it down. And 
Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the, the portal and what it stands for overall, but while it's a reality, you better take advantage of it or you're going to put yourself behind. Yeah, that that was the one thing that really stood out about that 24 class there for quite a while. I mean, they're, they're up to almost double digits now, but you know, they had like three or four kids committed and they had twice that in the 25 and even in the 26 class. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't that they didn't have talent. It was just that they were taking a very methodical approach and you could tell that they were trying to figure out what does the roster look like coming out of the COVID year and what, how does this translate in terms of experience and where the gaps are going to be? Because, you know, Pierce always talks about, we don't like necessarily recruit the best kids, although they do go after them. It's looking for kids that can come in and fill the holes where they have needs and and make a difference, right? And so, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that twenty twenty four class, you know, ends up. I mean, they've got some big kids that recently have committed that are, you know, very strong names and have a bright future. So, yeah, yeah, cool. <clears throat> well, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to watch um, this season. I think expectations are slightly different than last year coming into <laughs> preseason number one, and you know, I think LSU is going to be preseason number one by a, a long a long stretch. Uh, Probably. Texas is going to get a firsthand glance at them and, you know, early February or late February, I should say, as they come to the dish for a Tuesday night game. And um, yeah, it, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how Arlington goes. I mean, everyone likes to freak out again about those, those <laughs> early games when everyone's still trying to figure out roles and what the staff wants to do with the rotation and, you know, easing guys back into their, uh, their normal habits. But um yeah, I, well, I mean, like outside of Oklahoma State, this this year kind of feels like the Big Twelve is just up for grabs. It's I don't really see a a truly dominant squad. So, yeah, that's one of the things you'll see. I think continue is that it's going to be harder and harder to predict who's going to be good. You know, I mean, there's some obvious teams that have loaded rosters, yeah. um, but with the turnover from year to year now, like we're seeing a lot of it for our team, uh, but a lot of teams are. Right. Like even LSU, I mean, like they're they've got some mainstays and some household names that transferred in, but there's still a lot of newness. And, you know, the chemistry, like, you know, that's going to be that's going to be interesting to follow. You know, there's some you hear a lot of rumblings about bad chemistry due to NIL and just so many guys being mixed in year to year. You know, you have to be careful not to take too much of it. Right. And um it, but it will be, it'll, it'll leave a little bit more intrigue as to who's going to be good from year to year, I think, which is good. You know, it's hopefully it's not the same teams over and over, but yeah. um, you know, obviously we're heading to the SEC here within the next couple of years. So, you know, I think that's probably part of the shift in some of the size that we've recruited um, the physicality. Cause I, I don't, there, there's not very many small teams physically in the SEC. Um, and yeah, if you don't have some big boys, yeah, if you don't have some power both at the plate and on the mound, you're you're yeah. gonna struggle. You're gonna struggle for sure. But um, yeah, like you said on the schedule, we're gonna find out real quick, you know, if they can take a take a punch or not, going to Arkansas, Missouri, and Vanderbilt that first weekend. But yeah, this this group more than ever, I mean, it's gonna take some time to settle into roles and, and not just the roles on the field, I mean roles on, in the dugout. Yeah, um, you know, just kind of little things like people don't think about like who's coaching third, who's coaching first, who's, what's your role coach in the dugout? You know, how, how's that kind of stuff going to go? Um, you know, for Woody, it's his first D one season. Um, and I think having a guy like Chris Gordon helps a lot. Um, I think those two together, uh, get are very versatile. You know, Chris has been there, done that, you know, having his experience at Duke, um, as the pitching coach, you know, he, he handles a lot of the analytics stuff. Um, so that he'll be a great sounding board for Woody, I think, and can help navigate what, you know, not that Woody needs help navigating a baseball season because he's done yeah. that at multiple levels, but just the the schedule, you know, the schedule for a JUCO is different than the schedule for a D1 program. So, no you know, just having someone there who's kind of been through it at a high level too, I think was a great addition to the staff. Um, and having Caleb as a holdover, for the hitters, it's a big deal. And, you know, I mean, this will be coach, coach Rod's first year as a uh, assistant in a long time. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, th- there will be some adjustment and, yeah. you know, it'll, it'll take a while to figure out who's going to do what. And, um, but you know, that, that, that's what's going to make this season fun. And 
why it's going to be fun to watch them develop as a group. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. Yeah, I was talking to Woody before the before the fall games, and he was joking around. He's like, "Yeah, recruiting. Uh, what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you get used to a whole different lifestyle now it, it, as the pitching coach, and you know, putting the time in. But one of the the good things to hear was that you know you, they brought in a couple of senior or ex, more experienced guys like Porter Brown and, mm-hmm. and Tanner Carlson who who've been there. They've been around a program and mm-hmm. they know what it means to put in the work, especially Porter coming from a, a you know traditional powerhouse like TC, right. right? Comes out his first fall game and, you know, hits for the cycle. It's like, all right, well, yeah. <laughs> you, you've melded well, right? So like, yep. you're going to push for your spot and that's good. Um, so it's, it's been interesting to see. And then, you know, I think the, at one point we were kind of joking around in the press box with the analytics team about, so is the entire infield going to be nothing but freshmen? You know, it's, there's that possibility, right? And so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's going to take time for the for the team to meld and kind of come together. But I think long term, they it sets up really well for especially next season as they they get a lot of experience this year. And you know, Pierce and the team made sure that it's a very home friendly schedule, which is I think really beneficial to them. And they can they can have that time, I guess, in the spring to kind of come together before Big Twelve play. So yeah, it, good good luck um, relaying to the masses that this team's going to require some patience. <laughs> yeah. Our, good, our fan base good. is typically pretty patient, right? Good, it's good a very patient fan base, that. right? Look, look at look at football as an example. Very yeah. patient. Good, good luck with that because that's what it's going to require, and uh, it might look it might look dramatically different three months later than than when it starts. And yeah, with youth and new faces and new coaches, I mean, it's it's a total kind of transition year. So yeah, well, they see, too. To see so how it all there's all the home runs. runs. Who's what's hit a home the, run uh, <laughs> yeah, it's true. What's the uh, what's the over under on how many innings we get before our first fire X Y Z pops up <laughs> on the board? Oh, seven, five? No, I was going to oh. say three. I was yeah. going to say three. Maybe you get I was the benefit of the doubt. You know? <laughs> is the is the alumni game televised? Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah, I was. I was somewhat secretly hoping that Missouri would be the very first game up in Arlington, just to, you know, not that they're a bad team, but ease on in, but no, they're, they're going straight for the throat. So. Hey, well, you know, I mean, have, have, I do like the fact that, I mean, you're going to, you're going to have everyone's attention as a staff because nobody wants to go out there and get embarrassed. Um, You know, and I think it, I think it matters, you know, like, especially for a team that has a lot of new guys too, like, you know, these, the, the freshmen and they've played against the freshmen in Arkansas. So they know what that caliber is like, you know? So I think that's one of the bigger transitions for the new guys that get to Texas is they don't understand that on Tuesday, UT San Antonio can come in and beat you. Right. Cause a lot of times they'll save their Friday night guy early in the yeah. season. And, you know, you're, you don't ever get to take a day off at Texas and that's, it's tough but it's good. It, it prepares you for that next level and makes you understand. And, and pretty much every team I've ever been a part of at Texas, like they, they have that moment where you're like, okay, yeah, we got, we got our ass kicked because we weren't, <laughs> you know, we thought we could just show up. Um, yeah. But I, I think, think it's more gonna... important too on like those, those double midweek games against folks like Texas state where yeah. we all saw last year, right? Like it's, there, there's some juice there and, you know, Trout's got a good program. He's, he's done a good job building it up and it'll be, it adds a little extra fire to some of those midweek series. So, yeah. Yeah. That, that's the one thing I've always liked about coach Pierce's scheduling. Like he, he likes to schedule a tough schedule. Right. And you may, you may have some times in the middle of the season where you're thinking like, man, like you, you can't get your head above water, but in the, in the long run, it'll like, it'll make you sink or swim, you know? And um, I, ultimately it ends up being a good thing more often than not. Um but, you know, you, you have to, I mean, it, it takes a mature team a lot of times to understand that. Like, you're you're probably going to drop some Tuesday games this year um, just because of the inexperience, right? Yeah. And, you know, not, there's a lot of guys on the roster that don't understand yet what it means to, <laughs> to have to, to get everyone's best every single time out. And it's exhausting, but it'll make them better. Um, and it, like you said, it'll take some time for people to settle into roles you know, on the field and off the field. Uh, so, but, it, but it, it, it does give you a, a long runway as well for what the potential of the team could be. 
too. So, you yeah. know, what we see week one may look way different, you know, by the time we're rolling around for the big 12 tournament. So yeah. No doubt. That, that, and that's, I, I'm excited about that. I'm excited. Yeah. To see it's, yeah. It like you, like you're saying, Zach, it's a wide open big 12. I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day about Texas tech and I was like, yeah, this is like, it seems like a, one of the younger Texas tech teams that they've had in some time. Cause they always used to be so old and physical and mature and, and, and things like that. So um, yeah, it'll be fascinating to see how the, how the big 12 plays out. Um, you know, cause you win your league, you've got a good chance of hosting. Um, and then, you know, all bets are off from there. So, yeah, the, the youth around the around the league this year is going to be really interesting to watch because they got they had some, you know, really impact freshmen at places like Tech and Oklahoma State, even Oklahoma. Um, and then you bring those kids forward another year and you're expecting some jumps. And then, you know, you look at Oklahoma State, some of the guys they brought in, you look at some of the the kids that TCU brought in. It's, it's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out because – you know, there's four or five teams at the top that, you know, I wouldn't put any money on any of them right now because you never know what it's going to look like on a bad weekend. And all of a sudden yeah. it completely shifts the landscape. So it'll, it'll be a fun season for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'll remind you of that if they're like 12 and seven and everybody's freaking <laughs> out. Cause that's, that's a real possibility. Yeah. You know? sure. And then they could end up being like, you know, you blink and they're like, 38 and 20 a couple months later. So that's just, I, uh, that's just kind of the year I'm expecting. I, I, I projected anywhere between 35 and 38 wins and I, w- I was thrown off the building and shattered down. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. But uh, gents, I appreciate y'all coming on again, as always. Y'all, yeah. are, y'all are a wealth of information and, in, and, in, and talking about Texas baseball and the prep scene where, where can people find you and you know, how do they get, how do they get some more information out of five tool? Yeah, um, at Dustin L. McComas on Twitter. Um, I'm sure some of you are following or have, uh, have have shown up in the replies anytime I tweet about Texas stuff. Um, and then all of our Five Tool stuff is, you know, Five Tool and Five Tool Texas um, all over Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can follow our podcast at Five Tool Pod on Twitter and Instagram, you know, tweet out some stuff there, some clips and player highlights. And we're talking about guys and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we're all over the social media landscape. And, you know, chances are if if um, you want to look up a Texas commitment, we've probably got a video of him floating around somewhere. So that's that's one of the really cool things about what we do is is uh, building up those libraries for those guys. Sure. Yeah, and y'all just came out with the five tool fifty five, correct? Last was yeah, last for the twenty four class. Yeah, our, our debut of that list there, and you can check that out at. I mean, uh, go visit five tool org and, and check that out. A two part list, uh, definitely a few Texas commitments on there as well, and uh, it's it's fun. Um, it's it's early because those guys still have two full high school seasons, so a lot of development's going to occur. But yeah, um, fun to put that together, and definitely some Texas presence on there, and uh, um, you know. Theo Gillen, you know, leading the way there. Big get for Texas recently out of Westlake. So if any yeah. of you local local Texas fans want to go get some eyes on a, on the the crown jewel so far for that 24 class, he's, he's just down the road at Westlake. Yeah, and they can ch- uh, check out Chance Covert. They got a couple of kids from that Westlake team. Yeah. Yeah, Westlake is in, in a giving mood, which is nice because they got a solid program. But yeah. Yeah, well, thanks again for having me on or having y'all on um, the show. And, uh, you know, you can catch me at Zach at the dish. I will actually be physically at the dish again <laughs> in early February. So I'm taking a little break as uh, as the kids are getting in shape and playing their winter conditioning. So thanks again for for watching and check us out. Have a great one. Right. Thanks for having us. Appreciate See it. ya.